something uh, while we are talking about future, present, past. This thing that we did just now, that is eating food, having lunch, cannot change, I assume, in next uh, whatever number of years. And your insulin starts working, your metabolism starts working, and you fall, start feeling sleepy, that also I think you cannot change. So, something I just quickly brought up is, things that we do, which I think we, were do, we used to do 20 years earlier, today also we do to uh, get rid of our sleep, or walking, a quick stroll after lunch, is what we still do it today as well, or there is something which we, there are uh, organizations, there are uh, companies in Japan who officially allow you to do that for 15 minutes. So, these are the things I think will not change, be it past, future, present or future. What you can change possibly today and tomorrow is give your boss a virtual reality that you are playing ten level tennis but he feels that you are working. That you can possibly still do today. You can do possibly today. So that's, that's a quick way of uh, starting the afternoon session. Uh, I still have few such uh, pictures to talk about. So our Indian movies, I think they talk a lot about uh, what you'll see in 2050. I think there was a, a movie that flopped, uh, named 2050 or something, which showed what can happen in 30, 50 years down the line. This is a very common picture that we see, Mumbai. Dharavi changing into something like this, Bangkok or Singapore or we are perhaps still here but slightly there and a future can be something where a train is skyrocketing, the, the ground is all clear, uh, vehicles moving in the air, that's something which we can possibly look at. That's infrastructure. Things that may not change is the uh, people's way of thinking or so we still might play cricket in a uh, office but today many of us have changed into mobile uh, get, get a free time you will get to get out your mobile and uh, play some games that's something for us present and this is again an artist's uh, representation of how a future workplace would look like I will not get into details but he talks about how we will, will be working but still in a, a different places, virtual reality, somebody uh, watching something in a cube, somebody doing a search, working in a bedroom, but still online with the counterpart in US. So that's, that's an art, artist's impression <coughs> or interpretation of future. So what we are talking about is there is a different pace in which uh, uh, future can look like. If it is behavioral, uh, like your, uh, my father, he is still not used to mobile. But we, we are used to mobile, we are used to laptops, we are used to digital, but we are still, give, give me a chance, I will still go and play cricket, but not get to uh, play a game on a mobile. So that's our generation. Maybe future, so that's the behavioral part, which might change slowly. And the digital part is something which might move very fast and we can see a lot of changes in the future. So that's I think, I, I would like actually break it into three parts. So infrastructure which takes time to move, uh, behavior which uh, is kind of in between and uh, IT or digital and these will really move fast. And that's, that's kind of... Uh, so. I'll again go back to the simple thing. We are touching an elephant and trying to imagine uh, how it looks like. So, as I said, if it's infrastructure, so uh, be it even a simple uh, automobile industry. In 1918, uh, we have seen pictures where people uh, used to build a smallest part of a car by hand. For it to go robotic at many places, we are in around 2000. Things are slowly moved, they are not moved that fast. <coughs> Behavioral, as I said, all these are things which 
we have relatively done faster. And our favorite topics in IT, these are moving much faster. So that's my uh, kind of impression that how things will move at a different pace. So I will leave you with a thought at the end of the session <coughs> to give a how, how you can look at your work, what you are doing today and how it will uh, move in future. Well, which category does your work <coughs> fall into? So I'll have a, I have a slide at the end which will kind of leave you with that thought. So from here, I will slightly move to a bit on the IT side because that's where I come from. I will not really go into all that I think we have spoken at n number of uh, platforms about artificial intelligence, about SMAC, with SMAC which became SMACI, with IoT, with blockchain, everything. But what I would like to spend some time is the last part which is the piece which kind of covers everything. It is a bit IT specific but um, I will again take you back 20, 22 years back as to how we used to do programming, how we used to do things and how things are changing. So I will just touch upon that topic. So in IT if you see uh, you have your core software which does not change at that pace. You take your ERP, you take uh, your talk about your mainframes, your data at the ground, which will not change that frequently. What slight uh, changes at the heart, a faster pace is differentiation layer. So how what you do with your with your data, how you uh, want to present it to different entities, and how so be it analytics, be it everything. What do you do with your data? That is something is the differentiation layer and the innovation part comes at the front end. So whatever laptop to mobile to your uh, chatbot to uh, AI everything comes here and that is where you will see <coughs> things that are at a core level is IT centric. What you do at the front end is business centric. What you do as a bottom line saving is this brings you immediate money. If you give something on a chatbot, you might quickly close a close uh, in an insurance company. You might quickly get more policies if you do a chatbot. So these are the uh, three layers uh, which I talked about, and I think this also is a point where you can start thinking where you stand and uh, where each one of us stand and what is there in store for us in future. So these are again uh, how you should look at the two layers, the innovation and the differentiation layer is things you should not look at those layers the way you look at the core business. So if it is an ERP, you might look at different, but if it is about innovation and differentiation, these are the things you should specifically talk about. So I'm not again getting into specifics. We can always discuss offline. So what we are talking about is we must reinvent our profession. So uh, again, where you stand it depends on how fast you you want to uh, move. So this is a play point where I have actually slides which talk about each and everything. I will not really uh, go into uh, each of the slides. But just think about 22 years back when I was doing, I started writing a Java code with a Java C, compile the code and uh, uh, run, run my code. Every Friday or every whenever there was a deployment, I used to tell my family, don't plan anything. I'm going for a deployment as if I'm going for on a mission uh, <laughs> on a front to uh, fight a battle. So everything that you will hear, are my code development pe chal raha tha, test me chal nahi raha hai, production me kuch different totally alag tarikhe se chal raha hai. From that point till oh my configuration file, where did it go? Uh, it was there just now. Uh, I saw it yesterday. It was all in my test environment. Now in production it has disappeared. 
all excuses, everything. We have to spend sleepless nights in offices and we used to feel that, wow, I have done, made my day. I have spent 24 hours, I have earned my uh, salary and I used to feel that, okay, I have done a great job. Today, if you think, I have actually wasted my life. I've, uh, I would have done much better, I would have spent time with my family <laughs> uh, and complete waste. That is what is DevOps. And what you read here is actually common sense, <coughs> but which is always rare. So you have to really give a thought about this. <coughs> Simple thing like microservices. We, 22 years back, we started writing small, small programs. Then a age came where we said straight through processing. I want everything to come under a single umbrella. I click a button, everything gets deployed. And then when everything gets deployed, what I said two minutes back, everything falls apart also. And you sit in the midnight and say, oh, what went wrong in which code? So we are again back to microservices, where they say, uh, your small size of a team should be as small as somewhere uh, people who can share a medium-sized pizza. Uh, on a lunch table, you should have a medium-sized pizza, and all the three guys should, all, or the entire team should be, uh, the hunger should be satisfied. That's the size of a, a microservices team. What you do is you have your own <coughs> content, your own code, your own data store. You don't share data, uh, database with others. So we are moving into that kind of philosophy now where uh, we stand separately but we still are a team. So we are basically trying to address a business problem or a business solution. And But then we are not doing it as a single entity but maybe 10 groups are doing that. But we are still pointing to the same business objective. <clears throat> so, the uh, biggest thing about that is Polyglot. So, somebody is writing the code in Java, somebody is writing in micro uh, MS, somebody is writing in uh, Node.js, all possible things, but you have your own pillars. So, you don't eat or uh, step on each other's shoes. At the end of it, if your home is well taken care of, the other person's home is well taken care of, the entire building is well taken care of. So that's, that's the uh, simple technique. So basically what you try to do here is try to uh, standardize, keep it small, keep, do everything automated, so automated provisioning. Or, so basically it's, uh, in simple terms you must have heard a word of container. So you build everything in a container. For a small environment you build a small container for a large environment you expand it. So everything is in that container. There is nothing that a person individually has to do. So I have examples now today where my person, one of the team members, there is a deployment the, over the weekend. He has spent 10 minutes in a mall. There was somebody on site at the customer place. Uh, he just called up, hey, I just need that small help. He, he was in a mall, he helped him the deployment was done. And I really don't have sleepless nights now when a large deployment is happening at a customer site. So those are, so common sense, but what we used to do manually, completely stop manual, move to automation. I think that's, that's the one line uh, thought. So again, I'll not, as I said, uh, what it brings on the table is this. So this is one place where you have to change. When you move to this, uh, to adopt to cloud native, these are the 10 things that you have to change. And each one of it is, is in a, a subject itself. And actually, take it from me, you can build your career in each of these uh, clouds. So you can be a project manager, you are agile, uh, Scrum comes into picture, you can build your career, you can still add value, you can be a deploy person only deploying code because that's where new products are coming, new changes are coming and you need to change your automation tool. And 
everything. So architecture is where the microservices part comes. So each of these can be your career. And uh, you can actually start thinking in that line. Uh, next slides I'll completely jump because I'm, I was actually picking each and every cloud and having one month's life. I'll completely do So this is the place where we spoke about where one application you can write in a rational database, another application you can write in no, no SQL and you can you are still good because you are working in your pillar. So I'll just jump to the last slide and actually leave you with a thought which is a very old concept but now perfectly makes sense. Pace layered architecture and this is what I was talking about. You have your system of records. So you had mainframes earlier. Later on, you slowly moved to ERPs. Your uh, data still remains same, but you try to do uh, more standardization on that layer. But that is sitting stable there. Uh, just a quick analogy for you to make it uh, understand better. Think about a building. You build a building you don't <coughs> reconstruct it for at least 30 years if it is built well, 30, 40, 50 years or whatever. You do your electric uh, wiring, your uh, piping, water piping, all those things, maybe 15 years, 10 years, you still will have to change it. Your furniture, TV, everything, you might change after 5 years or even 1 year, 2 years, depending on your taste. That is what this is. System of records is your building. System of differentiation is there is water coming in your home, but you may want to send it to your bathroom, to your hall, to your which are place, three bedrooms. That's the way you want to send it. That's the differentiation part. And finally, what you put on your uh, those uh, fancy uh, faucets that you get nowadays. That's your system of engagement. How you want the water to come on you. So that's that's the analogy. For same exactly fits in IT. So things that are here, they age slow. The pace of aging is slow. What you see here is medium range. You so services which earlier uh, the, there was national stock exchange where uh, few years back they were only give they only saved ten records. What's the stock name? What is the current price? What is maybe the PE ratio stuff? Today, they offer analytics, so they have huge data. But there is one organization, a consumer who will only need the current price of a stock. Somebody may need an entire analysis of a stock. That's the differentiation layer. So you decide how you want to present it to a presenter. And then system of engagement, typically on a chatbot, you ask what is the rate of Reliance Industries today. You get a thing. On a website, you get a, a detailed analysis or a, rather on a laptop, on a web page. That's the engagement piece. So, this is where I just leave you with that thought. You find out where you are uh, and that will actually decide at what pace the future will look like for you. That's basically the pace layered architecture for you.